And good evening, everyone, and welcome to our preseason coaching show tonight on WFJA Sports. The local high school football season begins this coming Friday night with both our local teams beginning the season at home. I'm Keith Womack, and I'll be your host during the first 30 minutes as we visit with Lee County Head Coach Steve Bordeaux. And at 7.30, our good friend Austin Thomas will come in and take over the microphone. He'll be joined by Southern Lee Head Coach Michael McClure. Our coaches' shows for the upcoming season will, will air live every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock and 7.30, respectively, right here on WFJA Sports. And these shows will re-air one hour before game time on Friday nights. Videos of each coach's show will be posted on Wednesdays on the homepage of the WFJA website and the WFJA Facebook page. Our coaches show each week are brought to you by a, gr a group of great sponsors. And of course, so we hope that you will thank these advertisers uh, by doing business with these guys and thanking them in person if you have an opportunity. Bringing you the coaches show for 2022, of course, our good friends at Jones Printing Company, Wilkinson Cadillac Chevrolet Buick GMC, Domino's, The Dairy Bar and Flame Restaurants, Farm Bureau of Tramway, Sheriff Brian uh, Estes and Fix It Plumbing. We're going to take a short break and bring in head coach Steve Bordeaux and we'll be back for Yellow Jacket pregame show right after these messages. WFJA would like to thank the following advertisers for bringing you the Lee County Coaches Show. Jones Printing Company, Domino's, WilkinsonCars.com, Sheriff Brian Estes, Farm Bureau of Tramway, The Dairy Bar and Flame Restaurants, Fix It Plumbing, and Brick Capital Video. And we'd like to welcome you back, and of course, welcome to the Yellow Jacket Football Coaches Show and our first Coaches Show of the 2022 season. Of course, I'm your host, Keith Womack, and I'll be joined, or I am joined in the booth, by Lee County Head Coach Steve Bordeaux. Coach Yellow Jackets coming off of a 9-4 and four season mark, represented the Southeastern 3A, 4A Conference as the number one seed in the 3A playoffs and advanced uh, to the third round before losing to Jacksonville last year. What a great season. Coach, welcome back to the booth, and uh, congrats on a great season in 2021. Uh, yes, sir. Thanks, thanks for having me. It's good to be back and ready for some football. Well, Coach, we got several things to talk about. 2021 represented a lot of new for oh, Lee yeah. County. A new conference, uh, different uh, players that obviously are moving up, uh, New players that came in from the JV team, even some new players that came in as freshmen. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of adjustments that had to be made last year. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the way last year went for you. You know, so I, I think uh, really coming off of COVID and kids playing the spring football season uh, in 2021. 2021 was a lot of football games for the for these guys and us as coaches with a short turnaround in the summer. Um, the boys did a really good job of adjusting and being ready for some new challenges in conference, um, so some some tough non-conference games, and obviously I think that prepared us to to play some tough teams in the playoffs with a couple good wins um, and battling in that third round game. Yeah, we loved it. It was a lot of football, uh, really, yeah, in 2021. <laughs> so, uh, but I thought the Jackets did exceptionally well considering the talent level we were playing having to play Richmond County and Scotland County and Pinecrest, all very good 4A teams. Well, Scotland's 3A, but the other two being uh, excellent 4A teams. So, again, congratulations. It was a lot of fun watching this Yellow Jacket football team from 2021. Uh, but, of course, as we all know, players graduate. Hopefully some move on to college. Oh, yeah. I think we had a few go uh, to some college programs. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But, Coach, from the time last season ended in late November all the way up until a couple of weeks ago or until actually today, um, what have you guys done in the off season to prepare for 2022? Yeah, so really right after the season ends, we, we, we start getting in the weight room. The, the boys lift weights during school. Um, we transition to after school. Uh, we start doing some skill development. But we, we push so many guys, and so many guys in our program do a great job of playing other sports. So whether they're playing baseball, we have a whole lot of guys that are part of our track program. Um, Coach Lett and Coach Heron are, are also part of our track coaching staff. Um, and we had a really good season in track. So that kind of transitions to, to deep spring where we start to put pads back on. 
um, and actually have real spring practice. Uh, which we got to have a little bit of contact and do some things out there, see some see some of these guys' development and see uh, what the strength and speed they've added. It changes things throughout the summer. I'm uh, getting a chance to throw the ball around in seven on seven and and uh, continue to work in the weight room. Well, Coach, obviously we've talked about 2021 mm -hmm. enough. We need to talk about the losses from graduation. Let's talk about some of those uh, guys that we lost and the positions that we're going to have to fill uh, for the 2021-2022 season. Yes, yeah, so I think it definitely starts with, we talked about a lot last year, number one, number two, number three, you know, Kenyon Palmer, Tyreek McKendall, and Eli Garrison. Those three guys were our three leading receivers. Also played a lot of defense or special teams. Um, you know, that those are three guys that are, will be tough to, 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 to replace on and on and off the field. They were, they were three of our captains. Um, so it, it all starts with them. I actually saw a video the other day where Kenyon Palmer came back and surprised his mother at the door. And uh, I thought it was a great way. Obviously, it's great to see these guys, mm -hmm. some of them going on to play college yep. ball and uh, very proud of what those guys were able to bring for Yellow Jacket football. So positions, we have uh, uh, fill-ins for those uh, yeah, so, key losses. So it, 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 it's, 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 so it's some big shoes to fill. We got some guys that are doing a really good job uh, that we've seen throughout the, our first couple of practices and scrimmages. Um, you know, Logan Walker is a guy that's doing a lot on both sides of the ball. Um, Kenyon, uh, excuse me, Kendall Morris is a, another guy that's doing a lot. Um, Isaiah Peoples is having an increased role. He did a lot last year for us already. Anthony Battle. Um, those are four that are going to you know, kind of be in that little rotation to, to play some on offense and take some of their defensive reps. And another receiver, Jaden Hills, a guy that uh, has really stepped up in um, these early August days. Well, I've said it before. We even talked about it at breakfast a little yeah. bit this morning. One thing I, I absolutely love about high school sports is, you know, it's it's one man out, another man steps up, truly, because a lot of these times the players that come up and fill these positions are guys we've never heard of mm -hmm. coming off the JV team, some uh, coming from uh, even from the middle schools, and uh, and they grow a lot, and they just become much, so much better, and it's fun to see what you guys are able to do with them. I do want to take one minute real uh, fast, Coach, to thank our sponsors, of course, of course uh, Jones Printing Company, Wilkinson Cadillac, Chevrolet, Buick, GMC, Domino's, the Dairy Bar and Flame Restaurants, Farm Bureau of Tramway, Sheriff Brian Estes and Fix It Plumbing uh, Coach. Those, those have been some great sponsors. Some of them have been with us many years, and I, I know you know that because you see it every uh, Tuesday night when we do the coaches show. Yeah, definitely. It's great great to have the support for for sponsors for, for this and all the things that people do in uh, Lee County to support, you know, Jacket Athletics and just all athletics in Lee County. Uh, without that group and um, other people in town to help, none of this stuff is possible. The kids can't have the things they need, um, and we can't make it to and from games. So we appreciate all that help. Well, Coach, let's talk a little bit about uh, some of these early August morning practices <laughs> that uh, I'm sure – a lot of the guys have gone through. I think once uh, school starts, you were telling me that you'll move some of those practices right. to the afternoon. But how have they gone? And then uh, we'll talk a little bit about the two scrimmages the Jackets have had. Yeah, so I, I think the, the boys really embrace the, the the early mornings. You know, it, it's early, but it's 8 o'clock. It's not that early. I'm it's not too bad. So we try to get out there and beat the heat. Um, we get our practice in. Um, we're off the field pretty early. Um, and able to lift some weights before it even gets hot, and then the boys can have a, a, a you know a still enjoy their summer in the afternoons or work their jobs whatever they need to do. But we've had really good numbers um, this this summer and you know into the fall. Um, you know we're 90 plus in the program. Um, that's a, a big increase um, from 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 previous years, uh, which has allowed us to have a little bit bigger varsity team, but a, a much bigger JV team. Um, and you know the the way we we do everything in the program is you know that's one group. You know, we're, we're trying to, we're coaching the same way. Um, that allows us to have those guys ready. If we, if, if somebody needs to get called up mid-season, you know, they're being coached by the same coaches. So our JV guys are, are, are vital to our, uh, our future and our current uh, situation. Well, we certainly doesn't hope it happens, but we have seen instances where a player goes down, mm -hmm. sometimes for a couple of weeks, sometimes for more than that. Uh, but Again, getting back to one man down, next man's up. Uh, even some of the freshmen and sophomores have to be ready to play. Definitely. So, uh, and I, I go 
goes to thanks to the our coaching staff. You know, we have, we have an outstanding coaching staff. I'll name a couple of them. I'll drop some names. You know, Coach Heron is our defensive coordinator. Um, you know, King, Coach Little and uh, Coach King coach our DBs. Coach Wilson coaches our linebackers on offense. Coach Letts, our offensive coordinator. Chris Thompson's our uh, receiver coach. Grant Bird and uh, Carlos Santiago are our offensive line coach. And uh, Coach Williams uh, is our quarterback coach. All those guys help make this thing happen. Um, just like our sponsors to making everything else happen, our, our assistant coaches make it possible for us to efficiently run practice, help make sure these boys sometimes getting to and from practice, watching laundry. They're actually right now helping paint the, our game field. Um, they're probably mad at me because I'm over here doing this instead of helping, but I'm going to head back over here in a few minutes and do that. Um, so without those guys, we can't do any of this. I remember not too long ago, uh, Coach Thompson and his father mm -hmm. Uh, painting the stadium yeah, uh, yeah. On, a, on a couple of Saturdays. So a lot of work to be done to prepare Always. for, for Yellow Jacket football, not just at practice, but uh, outside of practice. Coach, what did you what did you learn from uh, your practices and especially your two scrimmages? Yeah, so I, 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 what I enjoyed seeing was our, our boys are flying around to the football, um, especially on defense. You know, we're running to the football. We have some experienced guys on the offense and defensive line, which is allowing us to uh, be physical up front. Um, you know, if you can, hopefully, the old saying, you stop the stop the run and you can run the ball, you got a chance to be a pretty good football team. Um, we have the guys up front to do it if they can continue to to develop and go. So we've been we've been excited to see that in our two scrimmages. Uh, both scrimmages we were very competitive. Um, we were able to do things that we had. You know, we're not worried about winning the scrimmage, but we want to know that we got better, and we want to continue to build depth. Um, and I think in all those practices and scrimmages, that's been a key, and we've been, we've been successful so far. Well, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, maybe we can uh, talk a little bit more in detail about some of those uh, position players, oh, some yeah. of the guys that are going to step up this year. Uh, but we got to hear from our, a few of our sponsors right now. We'll be right back to talk more Yellow Jacket football right after these messages. WFJA would like to thank the following advertisers for bringing you the Lee County Coaches Show. Jones Printing Company, Domino's, WilkinsonCars.com, Sheriff Brian Estes, Farm Bureau of Tramway, the Dairy Bar and Flame Restaurants, Fix-It Plumbing, and Brick Capital Video. And welcome back once again to the Yellow Jacket pregame show here, the Coaches Show uh, edition of the pre uh, to discuss the preseason uh, information and try to find out as much as we can about this uh, new edition of Yellow Jacket football. And Coach, um, looking at the schedule, I know that we've got some non-conference games. We're going to be uh, have, we'll have Northwood at home Friday night, and that'll be this Friday night at uh, 7, 7.30, 7 yeah. game time, kickoff. Um, we also have uh, Overhills, where we'll be on the road. Uh, South Granville, a lot of people realize uh, that or remember that name <laughs> because we traveled two years in a row to South yeah. Granville, but they'll be coming uh, to Paul B. Gay Stadium this year. And then we also, we're making a little trip to Bakersfield, Virginia. So Mecklenburg High School, yeah. we'll be taking uh, those guys on. We'll also be traveling. Uh, we'll get back at the end conference to, to Union Pines. We'll travel to Hope County, all that through the first six weeks. And then finally, we'll have a couple of stretch at yeah. home where we'll have Pinecrest at home, Richmond County at home. We'll go back on the road to Scotland County. And then we'll be, of course, our final game will be at home against Crosstown Rivals Southern Lee. So a nice schedule there, Coach. It's tough enough in conference. Yeah. And, uh Looks like you've picked some uh, good opponents to to really test the Yellow Jackets here early in the season. Yeah, I think one thing with with, with the schedule we have put together, um, you know, it's it's, a, it's good. we're going to see a variety of things in our non-conference games, which is always what you want to do. Um, you know, Northwood's going to be a team that's going to have the ball spread out a little bit, and they have a couple pretty good players on defense. Um, Overhills is very athletic, and everything I'm hearing about them, they've done very very well throughout the uh, summer in seven on seven and. You know, that obviously matches up with them being very athletic. Um, so I think, you know, we hadn't played them in a couple of years. And last time we did, it was a very competitive game. Yep. Um, you know, the South Granville team is always going to be a team that's going to make us be disciplined. And they're going to run option football. So that's another test. And really, we go to week four, and I have zero clue what that team's going to do. It's a it's two schools being combined into one. Uh, we're fortunate to be able to find it was really a, a, a game that otherwise we'd have no game and only be able to play nine. Um, so they needed a game, we needed a game. We're going to make a little trip, and uh, hopefully it's a fun trip for the boys. But um, it'll be a big test because we'll, we'll probably go into that game not knowing a whole lot about their football team. 
Well, one thing you can be assured of is WFJA and John and I will be right there with you guys bringing the play uh, by play uh, to you at home if you're not able to travel. But we do encourage you to come out and join the Yellow Jackets, uh, whether they're at home or on the road. We'll talk about how you can get tickets in just a moment. Coach, uh, we've got some voids to fill. Uh, I think about the quarterback, the wideouts. I know we've got a lot coming back with the offensive line. We've got a great running back coming back. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got some good defensive players coming back. But tell us a little bit about what your offense and defense are going to look like and who's going to fill some of those key roles for you this year. Yes, yeah, so I think it I guess the name to start with is uh, as quarterback. You know, will graduating and uh, you know leaving leaving that spot open is you know Mark Schlesinger, who is a na familiar name. He made a lot of plays for us on defense last year. Has 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 been a guy that's made plays on offense at times too. Um, he's had a, a excellent off season. Um, he's truly stepped up into the role of a quarterback and being a leader. Um, there, there, there's more to it than just being able to throw the ball around. You know, mm -hmm. he's doing all those other things. So, so really, really excited about him and and what he brings to the offense and our our whole football team. Um, at re at receiver, uh, Logan Walker uh, is a guy that's had a really really good off season. Kendall Morris um, has has mm -hmm. played some. Obviously, at running back and played on the all over the field. He is taking his game to the next level. He doesn't want to leave the field. He he has truly embraced being a. a, a, a a football player. He's he wants to be. He's player. a football player. Um, you know, he he doesn't care where it is. He he's going to list his name as an athlete, and uh, he's going to go make plays. So really excited about those guys filling some roles. And uh, not the only role you had to fill this year. Uh, understand we had a coaching change, and then we've also added a couple of uh, key components to your coaching staff. Yeah, definitely. So so um, we have three three new additions to the staff. Um, you know, Coach Little's joining us uh, uh, to to help coach our DBs. Coach King is also helping with DBs. Those guys split uh, the secondary. Um, and we have Coach Bird, who is filling in a role um, with our offensive line. Um, Coach Bird and Coach King were guys that actually played football for me in the past um, to join Coach Heron. So we'll have three guys now um, that, that I coached that have went on to come back and coach with us. So it means I'm getting old. <laughs> well, you tell Coach Bird he might have the easiest job in the conference this year because uh, he's got a heck of a line coming back. He, he does, but uh, he 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 has a very good line up front, and uh, him and Coach Santiago do a great job with with those guys, keeping those guys uh, on their toes. And the offensive line position is one that everybody uh, knows when you mess up. All right, everybody, you know, it, it's one of those roles that they don't get as much love as some other positions, don't get the shine, um, but they, they truly get after it and grind and practice, and um, it's, it's an exciting group. Well, Coach, uh, you know, the personnel changes, offense, defense, special teams, there's going to be, especially on special teams, mm -hmm. we lost our kicker from yep. last year. Um, so what are we going to see different on the spe from the special teams yeah. Uh, with the Yellow Jackets so this year. I, special teams will be pretty similar. Um, Alonzo, uh, Kennedy's little brother, um, is, is going to kick for us. Um, ha has a strong leg, has has had a really good offseason in the weight room. Um, he he continued to be able to kick it deeper and deeper and deeper, and he can place the ball similar to Kennedy can. He's very solid on extra points and uh, be a threat on field goals. Um, so we're, you know, we're, we're excited about Alonzo and the things that he's uh, able to do. And we also have a young uh, kicker who's going to kick on JV that's going to be really good for us. You know, I've always thought that in high school in the kicking game, if you can be consistent from 30, 35 yards, you're going to add a lot of value to your team. And anything above that yeah, is really like a, a big bonus. plus. Def definitely so. And uh, Kennedy kicked, uh, was it a 42 or 42 43? or 43 yarder under some pressure right before halftime against you know, Scotland. So that was, a, that was a big time kick. Yeah, it was. It was a lot of fun watching. Well, cor uh, Coach, of course, uh, this week, or uh, Friday night's ball game, again, at 730 Right here on WFJA 105.5, we will be airing uh, earlier than that. The pregame show will come up at 6.30, then we'll be back live at 7 uh, to bring you the kickoff at 7.30. This week's opponent, uh, the Northwood Chargers out of Pittsburgh, North Carolina, are coming into Paul Gay Stadium. So uh, what can we expect, or do you even know? Yeah, so so first, uh, Northwood is also going to be our senior night. We're doing senior night the first game of the season, so senior night festivities will kick off at 7 um, prior to the kickoff at 7.30. Um, Northwood, uh, it's one of those, again, we don't know a whole lot. They have a brand-new coach who um, was was not at a high school last year. So, so, new, so, so new philosophy so, coaching Yeah, so, so nothing we probably got on film last year and played them means zero to us. 
uh, other than we can find a couple of their players. Um, they scrimmaged one time. We did not have like a film exchange, so we're really going into a game um, with a base game plan. And fortunately, we have a coaching staff that is very good at adjusting. Um, and we have a group of kids that understand that we put them under different pressure in practice to be able to adapt to a situation. So um, I could see early on in the game them lining up and stuff, and we have to be able to adapt and adjust. Um, and probably the same thing for them with us because uh, they, they don't also have much information on us. We are the same staff, so they can probably go back and find a little bit on us, though. Well, I tell you, I know the philosophy of one of the greatest coaches of all time in any sport, mm -hmm. Dean Smith, used to always say, "We got to prepare our game." Yep, yes, and sir. you gotta you gotta make that happen. What you want to do, mm -hmm. and put your will on your opponent. So I guess that gives you a little bit of an advantage yeah. because uh, you're going to be a little more seasoned. You've got some veterans coming back. Mm -hmm. uh, you had a great season last year, so. Uh, hopefully, if we go out and execute those things that we know we're capable of, uh, Yellow Jackets, uh, if we can get past those first game jitters, uh, hopefully we'll be in good shape. Yeah, I, th I think that's always kind of our game plan, just to handle our business. When, when we play well, or, you know, it's, it's more how we play, not who we play. It's kind of our mentality. That's right. And when we play well, it doesn't really matter who, who it's against. Um, Northwood does have a couple notable players. Um, they have a, a defensive end who also plays tight end that's very highly recruited. Probably has double-digit double, double digit offers right now by big Division One schools. Um, and, is, and he's a young guy. Um, so, you know, our boys are interested in competing against him. And, you know, I'm interested in seeing, you know, what how, how good a football player he is. Obviously, double-digit uh, offers, so that's big time. And three or four other guys that had good stats last year who, are, when you look at a, a roster, are have good height and are uh, – you know, decent-sized kids that play in athletic positions. So it would be interesting. Well, Coach, obviously we wish you the best of luck uh, in the opening game Friday night as Northwood comes to Paul B. Gay Stadium. Again, you can hear it right here on 105.5 WFJA. Coach, just want to take a minute or so, talk about uh, some of the alumni from Lee County High School. We know about Des Evans. We know about mm -hmm. DeAndre uh, Dingle Prince. Yep and uh, what great careers they're having at Carolina and App State. Yep. But there are more. Oh, Tell yeah. us a little bit about yeah, some so of the former Yellow Jackets that are now in the college uh, ranks. Yeah, so uh, Tyreek McKendall and Kenyon Palmer, both at Barton. Heard they both started out very well. Um, you know, it's only been a couple weeks they've been there now, but already making some, some impacts, it sounds like. Um, Colin Johnson down at uh, UNC Pembroke. It, they, they, every time I talk to their coaches, they, they're just, just talking so many great things about him, uh, which doesn't surprise us at all. Anybody that has met Colin before. One of, one of the best quarterbacks, yeah, he's, I think, in, in Lee County yeah, history, at yeah. least since it's been Lee County. Yeah, he, 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 he was a, it was a stud, and it's going to be a really good one for, uh, for them. Um, Jaden Chalmers is at, uh, at Campbell, um, another guy that we're expecting to hear mm -hmm. some big things about. So um, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's going to be exciting on some Saturdays, too, to follow the jacket still. And Landon Johnson. Landon's down at UNC Pembroke. Duran McCoy's down at UNC Pembroke. Um, Jaden Marshall is at, at uh, um, Columbia now. Um, so there's it's, it's a bunch of guys all over the place. Well, that's awesome. It's all always good to hear about former Yellow Jackets, and, and we certainly wish them the best. Oh, yeah. I know it looks good on the entire community and the coaching Definitely. staff and us and everybody when these guys go out and perform, especially at the college level. And, we certainly wish them all the success in the world moving forward. Um, real quick, tips uh, to get to this uh, Friday night's game? Yeah, so come come early. I said senior night's at 7. Tickets are on GoFan. Uh, they'll be at GoFan.com. Um, Search in Lee County. Um, the link's already up there, so you can go ahead and get your ticket and be ready to roll. Uh, weather, hopefully, is going to be beautiful. It's not going to be too hot, so come out and uh, support the boys. All right, and Coach, I want to remind everybody, come early, tailgate. Oh, yeah. Do whatever you can to support this Yellow Jacket uh, team. And, of course, again, we wish you guys the yes, best sir. of luck. I want to thank you, Coach, for coming in tonight and uh, joining us as we get ready uh, for this Friday's night, Friday night's game against uh, the Northwood Chargers. And, Coach, best of luck against those Northwood Chargers. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. All right, uh, that's going to be it for us uh, here on the Yellow Jacket pregame show. Thank you for listening. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. WFJA would like to thank the following advertisers for bringing you the Lee County Coaches Show. Jones Printing Company, Domino's, WilkinsonCars.com, Sheriff Brian Estes, Farm Bureau of Tramway, the Dairy Bar and Flame Restaurants, 
Fix It Plumbing and Brick Capital Video.